Over the past year, our conference has continued to implement the decisions that you have made on its renewal and restructuring. I will be giving a more precise idea of this later during our meeting, but I wish to announce that the two remaining standing committees are now in place. The Standing Committee of Communications has its full complement of members, the Vice President, who is ex officio chair, as well as Archbishop Mancini of Halifax and Bishop Plouffe of Sault Ste. Marie, the General Secretary, who is also ex officio, and three communications experts, Father Tom Rusica, Chief Executive Officer of Salt and Light Television in Toronto, Madame Niquette Delage, General Manager of Communication et Société in Montreal, and Mr. Barry McLaughlin, President and Co-Founder of McLaughlin Media. As an aside, I wish to reiterate the great importance that the Bishops of Canada have for Father Rasika and his media team. Salt and Light continues to be a vital communications component for the Church in Canada, and we are grateful for its professionalism and competence. And on another note, I will have the pleasure during, later during this plenary to, of introducing the newly appointed CCCB Director of Communications, who will serve as the staff on the Standing Committee of Communications. The second committee, the Standing Committee on Government Relations, also now has a, a component of members, complement of members. The president of the CCCB, who is the ex officio chair, as well as Cardinal Turcot of Montreal, Archbishop Collins of Toronto, and the General Secretary, who is an ex officio member. In addition, the Standing Committee also includes two impressive experts, the Honorable Benoit Bouchard, the former Progressive Conservative Member of, Par of Parliament, and Mr. Dennis Mills, a former Liberal Member of Parliament. This Standing Committee, as well, will be assisted by the new Director of Communications. During this year, I participated in the yearly meeting of the coordination of Episcopal conferences in support of the Church in the Holy Land and the Assembly of Catholic Ordinaries of the Holy Land. This year, because of the, the war in Gaza, which was being held at that time, we met mainly in Bethlehem with visits all to, also to Palestine and the territories as well as to Jerusalem. In August, I represented our conference at the Ninth Plenary Assemble of Assembly of the Federation of Asian Bishops Conferences, which met in Manila in the Philippines on the theme, Living the Eucharist in Asia. An initial final document has been issued, but a more complete text is yet to be released. The meeting focused on how the unity of the Eucharist enables and encourages Christians in Asia to, I quote, cross boundaries of religion and race, culture and language, caste and class, as well as to forge bonds of fellowship within and also with the people of other religions and cultures. In February of this year, the members of the executive, together with the general secretary, participated in the meeting of the bishops of the church in America, in Buenos Aires, Argentina, on the theme of the personal encounter with Jesus Christ in the experience of catechesis and evangelization. The presentation by our conference focused on the essential importance in the Catholic tradition of seeing this personal encounter within the context of the Christian community in its liturgical and sacramental celebrations, as well as in its outreach and witness. Last month, the CCCB executive and the general secretary met in Huntington, New York, with our counterparts from the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. With respect to our international representation, our executive committee at the beginning of this year invited Bishop Francois Lapierre to be part of a session on Episcopal leadership organized by CELAM. I also wish to point out that early in the coming year, our conference will be hosting the next meeting of the bishops of the church in America to be held in Montreal in February 2010, focusing on the year for priests. Later in the year, our conference will participate in an international meeting of faith leaders to be held in Winnipeg on the occasion of the G8, G20 meeting of political leaders in Canada. In Winnipeg meetings, the Winnipeg meeting is being organized by the Canadian Council of Churches to which our conference belongs. In reviewing the past year, I wish to note that 
our conference first strongly protested the awarding of the Order of Canada to Dr. Henry Morgenthaler. Joined the Evangelical Fellowship of Canada in intervening before the Supreme Court of Canada in order to affirm that on the basis of the common good and public interest, the Government of Canada should have a major role in maintaining and implementing the Assisted Human Reproduction Act. I par participated in an, ecumenical, as, as in an ecumenical observer mission of the Alberta Oil Sands, which had been organized by the Ecumenical Social Justice Agency, Kairos, of which our conference is also a member. And we issued a letter to all senators and members of parliament, as well as providing resources to dioceses on the un unacceptability of any legislation that would endeavor to legalize euthanasia and assisted suicide. In addition to the activities of our councils, commissions, and committees on which you will later receive reports during the plenary, our conference also over the past year issued a statement deploring the abhorrent notion of Bishop William, Hugh Williamson of the Society of St. Peter X that the terrible evil of the Holocaust or the Shoah did not exist or was exaggerated. We expressed our solidarity with the Holy Father in a personal letter to him following his public letter to the bishops of the world. A letter of welcome to the new chair of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, Mr. Justice Marie Sinclair. We joined the other Episcopal conferences of the G8 nations in urging our political leaders to take concerted actions to protect poor persons and assist developing countries. We expressed our ongoing concerns about the practices of Canadian mining companies operating in Central America and the Philippines. And we urged the Government of Canada to do more to assist those in refugee camps in Sri Lanka, conveying concerns similar to those expressed in the recent past with respect to the Christians and other refugees from Iraq. Finally, <clears throat> the lectionary readings this past year have focused on the Gospel of Mark in which a major theme is the slowness and the limitation of the disciple. The gospel, toward the end, as we all know, shows Jesus betrayed by one of his disciples, abandoned by the remaining disciples, and finally denied three times by Peter, the leader of the disciples. Yet for Mark, this is not the end of a tragic story. For early in the morning of the first day of the week, the women who had come to the tomb were told by a young man robed in white, to announce to the disciples and Peter that Jesus of Nazareth had been raised and was preceding them back to Galilee, where they would see him. To go to Galilee is to accept Jesus' universal vision of salvation, his outreach, and his mission. Galilee of the nations was the phrase used by Isaiah and repeated by, the gospel in, by Matthew in his gospel, Galilee of the pagans. Bordering on hostile Samaria, surrounded and permeated by Gentiles, Galilee was where Jesus had commenced his ministry, casting out evil spirits, healing the sick, calling and forming disciples, outlining his own teaching, and showing how it, is, how it differed from that of the Pharisees and scribes. Galilee is a one-word summary for our own pastoral ministry as bishops. Laboring in a society which so often has little faith, yet where we see the presence of Jesus, we join him in his mission of liberating from evil, healing, calling forth new disciples, and teaching. Ours is a mission of life and hope in our own Galilee of the nations. Do not be alarmed. Do not be afraid. Jesus is risen. This is the message from the empty tomb. This is the reason why the first letter of Peter reminds us that no, matter, that no matter the challenge or the question, we are to respond respectfully but not to be intimidated. May our plenary assembly this week encourage each other, all of us, in living and proclaiming the good news of Jesus of Nazareth and help us to recognize the presence of the risen Lord Jesus Christ in the Galilee where he has called each one of us to serve. Thank you very much. Thank you.